God is a good God. More and more each day, I'm understanding why the scripture tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. And that we should not faint. Because the opportunity is going to exist for us to want to quit, for us to want to faint, for us to lose hope, lose faith, lose heart. But if we are a genuine believer in the Bible and in the Messiah, the Christ, we will hold tightly on to him and we won't quit. I want to start today um, in Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Chapter 1. I have a lot on my heart. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it all make sense, but by the mercy and grace of Almighty, I pray that at the end of this, that you will get something of value out of what I'm trying to share today. In chapter 1 of Ecclesiastes, verse 9 says, The thing that has been it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing we experience today that is new. There's nothing new. What's interesting about this um, verse of scripture is that we are living in an age of technology and science and um, everything being stored in a digital cloud, what they call in the cloud. The enemy is trying so hard to mimic um, everything that is of, of, of God's creation, of the creator God. He's trying to mimic it like the creator created a cloud um, where we can look at up in, the sky, up in the sky and we can see the cloud changing. Well, what the enemy has done is created a digital cloud. And so what's happening is that everyone is now um, being programmed to tap into the digital world. And so we who are older people, we tend to think that this is something new. But based on what this scripture is telling us, there is nothing new. And so in the past, the, the Lord had to destroy the world back in, the, in Noah's days. So the people who are occultic people, who we know today as occultic people, what they are trying to do, and I believe they've been greatly successful at, is trying to create the world how it was before the flood. So what happens is the world was so dark and so evil that God had to destroy everything, the scripture says, except for eight souls. Only eight souls out of the world were spared because the world was so bad. And what the occultic people are now, they, they're trying to um, reestablish what they call the golden age of Atlantis. And during the golden age of Atlantis, there's been um, um, pictures in stone found where there was airplanes and there were astronauts. And there were same things we are experiencing today was experienced back then. Uh, they technologically was able to create hybrid beings and maybe even other ways they were able to create hybrid beings. And now you see um, they're promoting nanotechnology. Uh, about five or six years ago, I did a teaching on um, the real ID, that everyone was going to have to have an ID or you wouldn't be able to, remember the scripture says, no one is going to be able to buy or sell. Unless you have the mark. I'm not saying that the mark is the real ID. But you can see that the agenda of the Antichrist is advancing. No matter who is placed in the White House. that It doesn't change the Antichrist's agenda. Because it's all part of one system. Whether it be Democrat, Independent, Republican. It's all. Anyone who is in a position of authority globally is part of the Antichrist or the beast system. The only way you can become in, in a high position is you have to be a part of that system. Am I making sense to you so far? The, in, in the Bible, is 63 times that the word um, other gods, other gods is what is controlling the world system right now, who is really connected to 
Satan. Am I making sense to you? So quickly, let's turn to 2 Corinthians so you can see chapter 4, what I'm talking about. There's something, and I've mentioned this before, called almost everything I'm saying today, I've mentioned it before, but I'm going to try to re-mention it and bring it together and hope that it'll, it'll jog your mind to, or provoke you to think about maybe things in a different way. I was thinking about how at my age I wish that things could be back the way they used to be 30, 40 years ago because people had somewhat an illusion of more freedom. The church was more centered around believing that there was a Messiah. But what the enemy has done progressively in my lifetime that I can see is move people away from believing in the Messiah or the Creator. The word Antichrist doesn't just mean against Christ. The Antichrist means replacement of Christ. So what the enemy has done is done so many different things to replace the idea in your heart. Because I can't stop pondering and thinking and saying, this is your heart. Your mind is your heart. And I'm going to show you that after we leave here. We're going to go to Proverbs and I'm going to show you the scripture that says, your heart is your mind. It's where you think. It's not the blood organ that pumps blood. It's up here. And what the enemy has done, or the God of this world has done, is he has programmed us to replace God, the creator God, in our hearts. So that we don't have time for God anymore. We don't think about God anymore. Everything is about self. Or we're doing idolatry. Or we're... Um, involved in pagan worship so what the god of this world has done is replace our heart mind on the creator and have us embracing paganism to the point where i shared this with you all in bible study on wednesday is that last week almost globally everyone was celebrating easter which is eshtar which is goddess worship and Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton tweeted out the Easter believers or Easter worshipers. So Christians or people who say they believe in Christ got upset because they ignorantly believed that they were making a mistake or they were coming against Christians. But what they really were putting it out there because they are brazen now. The people, the occult and the people who are worshiping, knowing that they are worshiping Satan, they are putting it out there. But people are looking at it in a wrong way, thinking that they are making a mistake or either they are being offensive. But they are being truthful because they are putting it out there that people who practice or participate in Easter is, is believing or worshiping Eshtar. So their tweet was accurate when they say Easter worshipers. You understand what I'm saying? They don't have to hide it anymore. We have been made weak as human beings because we were not taught how to believe in our Messiah, how to believe in our Creator. And it was um, a facade was put on believing in the, in the Savior in Christ. Am I making sense of what I'm saying to you so far? I'm trying to break it down. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says, The God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. So the God of this world, we were born into a world where the God of this world already had dominion and possession over the systems of the world. And that same thing happened before Noah's flood time and even after Noah's flood time, so that from them, from, from the flood, to Abraham, no one believed in the Creator God. And what we are seeing today is the same thing. In the churches where the people say they believe in the Messiah and the Christ, they are embracing paganism because Christmas is Mithra worship. Okay? Easter is Ishtar worship. And I'm going to keep saying it because I don't know who's going to stumble upon this video and 
never have heard this before and I'm I was going to say I'm going to ask you to do the research but now what I'm noticing is the internet has been censored and sanitized so that it's a challenge for you to even be able to effectively research this information. Another thing I want to say at this point is that some time ago I um, came across a book called Windswept House. It was written by a Jesuit um, priest named Malachi Martin. And in this book he mentioned that the Jesuits was in control of the educational system. And what they were doing is now instead of calling teachers teachers, teachers was going to become, this was back in the 60s when this was done or when, what he's the time of period that he was making reference to because there was a, a, um, cell, a um, ceremony where there was an enthronement supposedly according to him in this book where Lucifer was enthroned and there was a simultaneous ceremony in Charleston, South Carolina at the same time that this ceremony was taking place at the Vatican. And in this book he's saying that teachers was going to be called change agents. And so what is happening is teachers are no longer educating the children. They are changing their mindset. They are programming them so that they can become more acclimated to the beast system so that older people and really Bible-believing people was going to be targeted for destruction or for discrediting them. So any parent or real teacher who did not go along with this agenda or this program was going to be destroyed or discredited. And so what you see now is the new politicians who are coming into uh, uh, power and authority and the new leaders of the corporations, they were brought up by these change agents. So they've already been programmed by the God of this world's system. So most of us, even older people, was already born, was born into a system that was already in place because since the Tower of Babel, the Antichrist was at work establishing his infrastructure to take over humanity. And the Bible is telling us this because the scripture says in Isaiah that God knows the end from the beginning. God already knew what was going to happen from the, since from the beginning. But we didn't know. We didn't understand. We didn't know that we were going to be the people who would be alive to see the darkness aggressing and progressing aggressively and progressing the way it's, it's aggressing or progressing in the world today. So it makes you feel heavy and sad and burdened but you have to have faith that you don't quit that you can't that you cry out to the Lord day and night that you stay close to him that you examine your hearts and make sure that there's no bitterness or there's no anger or there's no resentment in your heart towards anyone that you deal with the sin in your life that you don't make excuses and justify sin or doing wrong because right now we need to create a God we need to come back to him and let's turn quickly now to Proverbs because I want to show you in scripture where it says as a man thinks so is he Proverbs 23 is this making sense so far you can't quit you can't lose heart. You can't give up. Even though we attempted to, we feel like it. I'm going to tell you the truth today. I'm here by faith. Because I trust God. Even though what I see, what I feel, what I experience in my life doesn't feel comfortable or feel good. I still have faith that God, the creator God, is in control. Look at verse 7 of chapter 23. It says, for as he thinks, see, he thinks in his heart. So it's telling you, you thinking in your heart, your heart is your, is your mind. And that's why the change agents have to be put in place in the, in the school system. That's why now they're trying, to, they're trying to take your children at three years old from the parents and put them in a uh, our organization or institution that's going to program how they think. That's why everybody is now being given free computers 
because the computers is a is a way of opening the portals to the ether. That's why it's called Ethernet. The ether is the spiritual world. And, and I told you I mentioned the Akasic um, record some time ago. The Akasic is the ether. That's what the occult people believe and understand. A Akasic is a digital record of everything that everyone has done in the world digitally. And, the, and what they're doing through the computers and CERN and all of this stuff is that they're opening portals. So they have to get smartphones, smart TVs, computers, every type of device in the hands of every household to the point where they're making it free in schools for children to get their hands on computers because that's opening them up to a portal for the demonic to come from the ether. Am I making sense to you? So in schools now, it's being reported how children are acting up. Now they're trying to force older people to take vaccinations and also they come up with the real ID so that no one is going to be able to buy or sell by 2020 everybody has to have a certain type of ID with a chip on it or you won't be able to go into a military building or you won't be able to fly and it was interesting because I was in my yard the other day and I saw two young women I would say they were either in their late teens or early 20s talking about the real ID one person was educating the other one to the mindset or the book you know the understanding that this is what's coming and you better get your id so you're being programmed from a young age to acclimate into the b system so that older people or conservative people or bible believing young people is going to be targeted or discredited or time for you is going to be difficult so it's important to know these things so that you can press in to the Most High through His Son in order for you to be led and guided into all truth and so that you would get strength in your inner man not to quit or not to give up. But I want to re-emphasize right here that your heart is your mind. And I've been really meditating and praying on this a lot because as a man thinks, so is he. But I don't want my heart, I don't want to honor God with my lips and have my heart be far from him. I did a teaching on this a couple of weeks ago and it has stayed with me. Lord, please let not my heart be far from you. Let me not be honoring you with my lips, but my heart be far from you. And this scripture in Proverbs helped to emphasize or highlight what the heart is, which is what we were discussing on Wednesday. Am I making sense to you? So I want to switch gears a little bit and I want to go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. I told you that in the Bible is 63 times mentioned about the other gods. The other gods and it's interesting because in the scripture we just got through reading in 2 Corinthians, it says the God of this world has blinded the minds of people. There's a marathon that took place at a movie theater in my state this week. And they had it so that people could go into the movie theater and they had the movie theater set up with showers so that people didn't have to leave for three days. They just constantly could watch the Marvel movies. That's the Marvel movies and Iron Man and Transformers. All of these things is acclimating and programming people to worship other gods. And so the other gods now that we read about, uh, read about in scriptures that God told his people to stay away from, now those are the gods that is taking over the world. And those are the gods that people have been trained through the um, change agents to embrace. And anything about the real creator God now is a taboo. Because the enemy now has replaced creator God with antichrist spirits or little gods. Am I making sense to you? So in verse chapter 20, verse 3. And this is one of the original Ten Commandments that the Creator God gave to Moses. It says, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods, as you see it's plural, no other gods 
before me. Have no other gods before me. Let's turn to Exodus 23. Most of the scriptures is in the Old Testament about the gods. Exodus 23. Let's look at verse 13. It says, In all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect. Look around you. Pay attention to everything around you. And make no mention of the name of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. Practicing yoga is another god. Because yoga means yoking yourself to Brahman. And people now are practicing yoga in the churches. And it's so bad that now you can, your medical insurance will cover you to, to participate in yoga. It's all connected. The corporations, the B system, everything is connected to each other. So Kabbalah, Mithra, um, Easter, all of that is another God. And this scripture in 13 says, make no mention. Every time you talk about, uh, you say you're going to a yoga class, you on purpose connecting yourself to Brahman. Am I making sense to you so far? Let's turn to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5. Let's look at verse 7. So in verse 7 it says, Thou shalt have. In verse 13, this chapter we just left says, Don't mention them. This chapter is saying, Thou shalt not have none other gods before me. Don't have any other gods. Don't have, don't go into movie theater and stay three days without, you know, leaving just so you can say you participated in a marathon. You're being programmed. And I really don't know how to make this any simpler or clearer. Even on the news this week in my hometown, there was a warning on the news for people to not put their young child or young children in the front of a, a phone or, or these computers or smart devices because it causes them to have attention deficit. It recrypts their brain so that they're not able to read the Bible or books. It's teaching them to do everything digitally. The brain is being re-encrypted. Re Am I making sense? They know what they're doing. Because the Antichrist or the fallen angels is who is giving people the instructions as they worship them how to open the portals. So as people worship the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness is making people rich, even in the churches. Because people are promoting and teaching the agenda to prepare and equip people to continue to go in, the, in that advancement of worshiping other gods that the creator is telling us to stay away from. But the technology is driving people and pulling people and making it almost impossible for you to not tap into some of this stuff. Because this is the system of the world system. We're in the world, but we're not supposed to be of it. But at this point, we are, it's almost impossible to escape all of it. But as much as possible in your hands, you could not have to watch TV all the time. You, could, you don't have to be on the computers. You don't have to always be on your phone playing video games and doing all the things. As you do these things, you're opening yourself up to the demonic. And that's the most clear way I can explain it or say it. No human being is strong enough to resist something you can't see. Because you can't see what's coming. You can't see into the ether world. You can only see the results of it. And there was a, a, a man in our ministry who was telling us about the children in his school because he's a teacher. And the children are acting out in school and nobody knows what to do or how to stop it. Because the children are being downloaded through the ether with demonic entities. And the demonic entities is captivating and controlling and manipulating people. 
And those children are going to grow up and be the next generation of children who is going to be in control of the beast system, the, the, um, the corporations and the uh, churches and every aspect, government. This is what how the enemy is getting a foothold and already has a foothold on humanity. To the point where even through the chemtrails, our DNA is changing and we are struggling and people are doing research and seeing all types of things that's happening to the physical body to make the body become host for those entities that's coming through the portals. And this is what the people of the Creator, the Most High, the Savior, the Christ, this is what people are fighting against in their physical bodies. The pain, the sleeplessness, the rebellion, and the things that we see taking place in the world. This is why it's happening. And to some degree, we're not going to be able to change it. But what we can change is ourselves. We cannot, as much as possible, allow ourselves to be taken over and programmed by the entities that's coming from the ether or the spiritual world. And that's a battle. It's a hard battle. It doesn't feel good. It affects your emotions. It affects your well-being. It affects how you make it from day to day. That's why we need faith. And that's why Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Messiah, came into the world because this was happening since the flood. Jesus came to quicken us, to make us alive, to give us hope, to help us to be able to walk in power and in truth because the scripture says that the kingdom of God doesn't come just with word, but it comes with power. But the Antichrist has somehow shut us down through technology and through the teaching of the Protestants and all of the various different church organizations to disconnect us from the power that Jesus Christ died to make available to us. The only way we can really tap into that power is by us crying out to him day and night, studying, praying, fasting, doing whatever type of spiritual things that we can do so that we would not be deceived or go along just to get along. It's what I'm trying to sound an alarm about. Am I making sense? So that anyone who knows the truth, Anyone who is resisting the change and the change agents become a target through technology or through biological spiritual entities that's coming through the ether or the internet. Am I making sense to you so far? Let's look at a couple more. Chapter 6. This one is interesting. Chapter 6 verse 14 says, You shall not go after... <laughs> The last one is saying, don't have it. This one is saying, don't go after it. So you're going after it. This is what people, are, without even realizing it, they're going after the other gods. You want the newest technology. you going and you're buying it. They, do you understand what I'm saying? A retina reading. A uh, fingerprint on your phones is asking for your fingerprints. But people, young people who don't understand that the direction you're going in, even socialism is a part of the Antichrist's agenda to enslave people. You don't get anything free. Anything free is just a hook to get control over your life. And people of color, especially because we've been so disadvantaged, that we are able to be programmed and, and, and believe that something is being given to us free. And because it's being given to us free, it must be good for us. Be wary of anything free because everything costs something. Remember, David said, I won't give anything to God that didn't cost me something. Everything costs. If you're getting it free, it's going to cost you your freedom. Because what you're doing is just, without you realizing it, you're selling your soul for the next new thing. Or for what is free. And I'm, I, I just pray that somebody will get this today. It says, you shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are round about you. For the Lord, or the Most High, 
is a jealous God among you. Lest the anger of the Most High thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Before Jesus came, this used to happen a lot to people. And so what you see now is the spiritual force because, because the system has replaced what Jesus tried to replace, what Jesus came to make available to us. Now these old practices is resurfacing. Remember, there's nothing new under the sun. Um, I think it's Brunei. Um, Some place, um, they're cutting off the hands of people for crimes. <laughs> These, the Sharia law is part of that. You know, if, if you don't have your head covered or if you're caught in adultery, like the woman in the Bible was caught in adultery, the woman was killed. I mean, the woman would be stoned. These spiritual forces now is re laws and principles is now re coming back to the forefront because there's nothing new. In the sun, under the sun. Not, nothing new. It's nothing new. And I'm not coming against anybody's religion. Because you should be free to practice and worship whomever you please. All I'm doing is pointing out that what used to be outlawed is now coming back to the forefront. And this is what happens. The scripture says when you turn against the creator, he'll cause you to be taken from the face of the earth. So if you want to go back to the old practices, the old consequences now applies. If you're going to worship these other gods, now the consequence is going to apply. And that's what we see taking place. We've moved away from the goodness, the grace, the mercy, the holiness, the righteousness of Almighty, and we're moving back into these other gods, worshiping these other gods. We're worshiping these other gods so much that you don't even, nobody wants to hear about Christ. No one wants to hear about the Creator. No one wants to hear about holiness or righteousness anymore. It's all about how good I can be made to feel or how rich I can get. Do you understand what I'm saying today? This is, to me, some serious stuff. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Let's look at verses 3. This is, a, this, is, this is a huge one, too. They all are interesting. It says in verse 3, Neither shall thou make marriages. You see, people are trying to marry those who have different beliefs, and they get all caught up in the lust of the moment. And then once I heard a story the other day, a, 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 a rich man married um, a lady who was working for him and after one week of marriage or a couple of months a very short period of time the lady left the man because he was boring can you believe the man fell heads over heel in love with the lady and he was showering her with gifts but because he was boring she left him can you believe but people try to have a marriage and they have two different belief systems this scripture is saying, neither shall thou make marriages with them, them who worship them are the gods. Thy daughter thou, thy daughter thou shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So another way how it happened is you get married to someone who don't believe like you for the sake of peace, you follow after what they do. And so now, hundreds of years in the future, people can marry anybody they want to marry, but now humanity is following after other gods. It says, For they, sh they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Most High be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. If it wasn't for grace, a lot of people would be destroyed suddenly. Suddenly, let's turn to chapter 11 of Deuteronomy. Chapter 11. Thank you, Father. Let's look at verse 16. 
this is a really important one here. Verse 16 says, Take heed to yourselves that your heart, look at me, that your heart, your heart be not deceived. And you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Isn't this something? That your heart, your heart can be deceived. And when your heart is deceived, you turn aside and serve and worship other gods. So that's what's happened to us. Our hearts through programming has been deceived. And we have turned aside and served and worshiped other gods because our hearts was deceived. Is this making sense to you today? I'm going to close in Luke chapter 18. And I hope that you get something out of this today. Because God is serious and he's real. Regardless of what our circumstances are. And I want to take a moment here to say, I do lift up the people who follow us on YouTube. And some of you, I want to call you by names. Because I remember your names. Um, Beta, uh, Adar, uh, John, and um, Kim, and Kasanya. Those are people who send me emails. And I, I, I appreciate your emails. I, I appreciate the good comments or the words of encouragement. And I lift you up as the Holy Spirit leads me. Whatever your circumstances are or whatever is going on with you, I ask God to protect you and to bless you and to provide for you according to his riches and glory. So I, I'm grateful that even though I might never see you face to face, that you have a special place in my heart because of the comments that you have left me over these few months. And so I, as I lift you, I pray that you will, Karen, Vernice, continue to lift me. These are, these are people who I, I think about a lot. Regina, you know, I made a commitment to pray for you regularly. And those are the ones whose names I, I can remember. But in Luke 18, I'm going to go through this scripture backwards. I want to start in verse 8, and then I'm going to go back to verse 1. It says... Nevertheless, Jesus speaking, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Because what is happening today, when the afflictions and the persecutions and the torments and everything, the, the targeting through technology and spiritual technology and whatever's coming through the ether, when it comes against you, the enemy wants you to lose faith in what Christ has done for us on the cross. Now this is a parable we're going to go back and read in verse 1 that Jesus spoke. It says and he speak a parable unto them to this end. That men, Jesus speaking telling people, men ought through his parable ought always to pray and not to faint. And like I shared with you on Wednesday the opportunity has to be available to cause us to faint for him to say a parable, and in the parable before the before the parable, he's telling us men ought to always pray and not faint. So the opportunity is going to exist or present itself for you to faint, quit, give up, stop, stop believing, lose hope, lose faith. But it says, saying there was a there was in a city a judge. Remember, our creator is a sovereign, holy, righteous judge who always judges righteously. But this is saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. He didn't have any, any he didn't care about God, the creator, and he didn't care anything about any man because he was a judge. He was sitting in a high position, just like the people today, also in my hometown, or I heard it on the news today, um, um, this week, that there was a judge who was arrested for doing something that she didn't have any rights to do. And she, they showed her coming out of the courtroom crying. So this, 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 this judge didn't have any, any fear or reverence of God. And he didn't care anything about man. And it says there was a widow in that city. 
And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wear me out. She come to me often, she wearing me out. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge says. And shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, his own elect, which cry out day and night unto him. He will avenge you. Vengeance belongs to him. He will come to your defense for those who cry out to him day and night. That's what prayer is, speaking to him, crying out to him day and night. Though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Now, nevertheless, because you're crying out to him and what is speedily to you, might not be speedily to God. He says, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith in the earth? Are you going to stay faithful? Are you going to stay committed? Are you going to faint or hold tightly on to the Most High? Because we're living in some really, really dark, scary times. But God is faithful. He's a righteous judge. He promises that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He tells us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. That the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through him for pulling down strongholds that comes against us. But by faith, you got to continue to stand. You can't quit. You can't faint. You got to cry out day and night, day and night, cry out to him until he does what only he can do for us. Am I making sense to you today? Don't quit. And don't turn into yourself so much that you can't pray or be concerned for other people who are going through. Okay? 